Break it down now. I sound now. Everything will be alright. Yo, everything will be alright. Thank you, boom, uh. And everything is gonna be okay. We do this like the break of day and sway, uh. And I'm glad to be here. I didn't think that it would be three days in a row, not even one, yo. But things work out the way they do, and I'm feeling pretty good today. Now, how about you? And it's the daily, the daily, the daily, go get up, miss some show. You think it ain't when it is? Uh, you think it won't when it is? We are here, we are in motion, we do this thing. Taking off fast lane, no coasting. <coughs> tonight, tonight we're talking about don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. Don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. Or some might say, why would he buy the cow when he can get the milk for free? Well, what it all boils down to is a lot of people will tell you, to hold out on your man, hold out on your woman. Don't treat somebody like they want to want to be treated until they give you what you are looking for, and that's holy matrimony, yo. Even up the score, and make sure that you get yours first. It sounds a little selfish to me, but it could, could be worse. And I think we're going to dissect and break it all down, and let's talk about the things right now. Soon as the music stops, we're going to get into this thing. Pop the little bottle, and the throttle and uh, I go forward with ours and everything is going to be all right because we start and everything is going to be all right start shop right yo break it down and no clown up yo so that's what we're talking about tonight on the daily go get a visit don't give your husband I'm sorry don't give your boyfriend the husband treat so what do you think is it wrong for a woman to give her all in a relationship to her boyfriend and will he decide that he will not make her his wife because he already got what he was looking for? Now, I'm not going front. To me, it sounds a little silly. I'm not going to lie. It sounds a little dumb to me. Because if you're already getting what you wanted, if you're already doing what makes you feel comfortable, I don't know. Like the whole mentality of the whole thing seems a little crazy to me. Like, why would a woman think that if she's giving her man everything that he wants, then he will not give her what she wants when the time comes? Or why wouldn't he follow through? Because most of us seem to agree that men have a possessive and a jealous nature about them. So why would you want the woman that you know will service a man all the way from the from the hair top of the from the hat to the socks? Why would he want the next man to be able to experience that? Well, let's get 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 into it and get 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 into it right now, brothers. Right now, sister, so let's get it popping. Urban therapy with Sun Sun Seven Five Two. With this your daily, 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 the daily, the daily, the daily, the daily, the daily. Go get a business show. We do this every single day, every single day, every day, every day. It rains, every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. We break it down, baby. Every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains and the DG will do the same. I'm your host, Sun Seven. Sun Seven Five. No, Sun Seven Five Two, aka Omar with the. And if you can't say Omar with the. But then you just say Omar with the art. This is the Daily Go Get a Mism show all up in your area. I'm feeling like a real man should. I hope y'all feeling like real men and women should right now. So let's break this down. Tonight on the Daily Go Get a Mism show, we are talking about don't. I said do not give your boyfriend the husband treatment. Now, when you when you when you tell somebody or when you think to yourself, don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. Well, what kind of treatment does a boyfriend get versus what a husband gets? 
Because I'm thinking that when you really start breaking it down, the question that I would have for anybody who subscribes to this is, do you feel good about yourself? Because you know how we get on people for being calculating. For being selfish and for being manipulative, right? So if you know that you have you have something to give to your man, but you decide that you're not going to give to your man until he he gives you exactly what you want, even if that's not what he wants. Well, do you feel good about yourself? Now I know that a lot of women aren't going to look at themselves that way. And this situation doesn't even just apply to women because, you know, there are men who feel the same way. Like, yo, you ain't my wife. I would give you the girlfriend treatment, not the wife treatment. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, like when y'all go to the movies, it's like, ah, yeah, my wife can get can get the popcorn, the juju bees, and the snow caps. Maybe even some raisinets. Like I ball out for my wife and the uh hold on. Did I say the wife or did I say the girlfriend? Okay, let's say wife. Yeah, she, my wife can get everything. Go to the concession stand and buy all that extra high price bullshit. Raisinets, snow caps, choo-choo beads. Uh, what's, what's, what's the other thing? The, 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 the popcorn, extra butter, extra butter. My girl, my girl, she ain't getting all that. She ain't getting all that. I'm not spending no $75 on my girl in, in, in the movies. You know what I mean? Aside from the ticket. Because you know that 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 movie, that movie food is high as shit. I don't know where they where or how they justify the cost of that bullshit. But anyway, yeah, she can get hot dog, nachos, the whole kit and kaboo. My wife can. But my girl. Nah, she ain't getting no extra butter on the popcorn, and she ain't getting a large. I give my girl the medium popcorn. Yeah, you rock out with the medium popcorn, and guess what? And, all right, we're going to get you that hot dog. You're going to rock out with the hot dog. Don't No, don't ask for no raisinets. Them shit's like $3 a box. I can't get you no raisinets. Snow caps or whatever, you know what I mean? You're going to have to get snow caps around the way. Now, you know goddamn well they don't show the, they don't sell those snow caps in nowhere on earth except in the movies, and I don't understand that. Actually, it ain't easy to find raisinets outside of the movies. You ever notice that shit? When was the last time you you got a, 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 a box of raisinets in the store? The corner store ain't got them shits. Bodega ain't got them shits. They don't. They ain't got the poppy store. Ain't got them raisinets. I'm like no, nobody eat raisinets. What you think this is the movies? Snow caps. I've never seen snow caps in any store. Market nowhere. I've never seen snow caps outside of the movies. Have you? No, just keep it in the book. Have you ever seen snow caps outside? Snow caps. Snow caps. Let me see. Let's see what we're working with over here. Hold on. Hold on. Do they sell snow caps outside of the movie theater? According to guiltyeats.com, how snow caps became relegated strictly to the movie theater is beyond me. If you have ever sat in a dark theater crunching on a handful of these semi-sweet chocolate bites, then you know how truly satisfying the experience is. I didn't expect to be right about that shit. They don't sell snow caps outside of the movies? That shit is a straight cinema treat. No wonder they so goddamn high. Snow caps, theater size, candy, 15 something case, 33, 32. Man, them shits ain't like that. Y'all like snow caps, man. Them shit's garbage, man. Them shit's garbage, yo. Them shit's just garbage, son. Them shit's just garbage, Cow Chamber, let me follow Rita. Garbage, Ansel Jones. 
Garbage, my brother from another mother, Norris Hill. Garbage. My big sis, Robbie, Robin Ming here to do it. The- Garbage. She carry right morning, noon, and night. Garbage. Emily done laughing. I sit the in, 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 Emily. <sighs> but yeah. Don't treat your husband. I mean, don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. What are we really saying? What are we really saying to to our to our lovers and to ourselves and to whoever we may be telling to do that? Our our daughters, sons, or whatever. Like, what are we saying to them? Yo, hold out. Be selfish. Be manipulative. You know. Has there ever been a has there ever been a situation where a woman straight came out and told her man, "Now nah, I can't do this for you because you're not my husband." Now there are some things that I might agree with. I guess it was nothing. Oh. Oh, camera looked like something. Okay. Now, there's some things that I might agree with. Like, there's some things that I wouldn't do for, for do with my girlfriend that I would probably do with my wife. Like, co-sign, co-sign a, a, a loan, a major loan. Like, hmm. But the, here's the thing. I've done it before. Ja Biggs, my man, Ja. What up, my man? Yeah. Um, I've done it before. Well, I came close to it. I came close to it. And this, and, and the crazy part about this was, all right, way back in the day, and I mean back, 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 way back, it was 2004. Way back in 2004, me and my girl had broken up. Now, we had been together seven years straight. So this was the longest relationship that I had ever been in and the most serious relationship that I had ever been in. But we broke up. We broke up. We really broke up in um, in 2002, but we put the band back together in early 2003. So, you know, by 2004, things had pretty much come to a head and... Um, it was time to call it quits for good. And, and really, I think we had to do it because we had been through a lot. And she had, um, me and her had been through couples counseling and all of that. To me, it was more like marriage counseling because, shit, we've been together that long and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, we had decided that it was, it was a wrap. But, you know, Right after, right after we had broken up, she was like, "Well, yeah, I'm about this. I'm about to buy this new car, and um, I really like it." And it was her her brother in law worked at the car car dealership. He was he had just started selling cars at, at, at this car dealership, so he was telling friends and family, "Come on down if y'all want to. If y'all interested in buying a new vehicle, or whatever, I'm gonna hook y'all up or whatever." So he came down and he was going to hook her up. But they found out that, you know, they ain't want this new this new salesman giving hookups. You know, like nah, you sell them shits, you sell them sell them shits high like every like everybody else. You know, sh- shit on your peoples. And he wasn't willing to do it. He was like, nah, man, I ain't gonna give my give my people no bad deal. So they took the sale out of his hands. Like, listen, you stay step on the side, or either that, or you can quit. I don't care what you do, but you're not gonna you're not gonna sell her this 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 truck on the low. So they brought her in, and because they knew that he had already put her down on exactly how much it cost and what she should be getting it for, they played ball with her the right way. But they did tell her that her, her credit wasn't good enough for her to, to get the uh, car with no money down or whatever, so they told her that she was going to need a co-signer. 
Now, now me and her are freshly broken up, but we freshly broken up for good. And we did. We remained broken up. So, um, but it was fresh at the time. So she she called me like, listen, oh, you know, I, I um the 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 sale fell through with the with the truck. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I went with her to get the, the to uh to go see it initially. So I was like, Well, you really want the truck? She was like, Yeah. I'm like, all right, well, fuck it. I said, I co-sign. Well, my credit was better than hers at the time. So, you know, it was really on me. But when she came back the next day after they took the sale out of his hands and they brought me back, I mean, they brought her back the next day. I didn't come with her. So she wound up not needing me to co-sign in the first place. But I had already done it. And I ain't feel bad about doing it, even though I knew we was breaking up. Because I, I wasn't worried about her robbing me. I wasn't worried about her not paying her bills. She was the type that paid her bills. And so was I. So, yeah, I can easily say that I would never, I wouldn't co-sign a loan with, uh, with my girl the way I would with, with my wife, but I did it. So I can't really say that. So would I be able to say I wouldn't do it again? Can't really say that shit. If I know that you that you're responsible or whatever, <clears throat> back then I wasn't even. I want to say I wasn't as concerned about my credit, but I was. But anyway, <clears throat> um, so, um, yeah, I did that for my girl that wasn't that wasn't going to be my wife. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't see any reason to hold out. And by the way, I know, you know, y'all might be thinking like, yo, why would you do that? You crazy with a girl you just broke up with? Like, why would you, you know, trust her? Was she, she wasn't mad. It wasn't. It was pretty much an amicable split because this was the second time we broke up. But this time it was going to be real. But we wasn't going at each other's throats or nothing like that. And I knew I could trust her because she she knew my debit card number by heart. Like, yeah, she knew that shit. So, but I ain't never had to worry about her going in my account and taking shit. She wasn't no broke joint. She made more money than me. As a matter of fact, I don't want to come to think of it, shit. I was normally the broke nigga in my relationship. That, that is, that is, I, I used to stay with a six figure making ass. I used to be like, what you, what, what, what you spend your money on? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Anyway, don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. I've heard women tell. Tell uh, they 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 daughters that about sex. Give them the regular sex while y'all um, while y'all going together. Don't give them the good sex until y'all. <laughs> Don't give them the good sex until until he put a ring on it. And I'm like, good luck with that, grandma. Good luck with that. So you mean to tell me that you think that your, your granddaughter or your daughter is going to listen to that shit? Like, you know, I really want to go down on him, but I'm not doing it because if I go down on him, then he's not going to marry me. So as soon as he marries me, then... Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Or I don't know, you know, some dudes like anal. Maybe you'll hold out on anal. Like, yo, I'm not letting you do anal. Man, she going to do all of that shit. Especially if she in the moment. Like, fuck out of here. Ain't going to be nothing. She ain't going to. There's nothing sexual that you can hold out on. 
I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. Maybe, maybe uh, there's a hole you haven't explored. Like uh, the ear hole. I don't know if y'all know, but ear sex is pretty. Yeah, this shit is all right. Yeah, ears. I mean, and I've heard that nostril, nostril sex is is is, is, is it can be pretty intriguing. So I hear, so I hear. I haven't tried it, but yeah, don't <laughs> don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. Which y'all know. If y'all would like to talk, if y'all would like to speak on this topic, I invite y'all to call in. And the number to call is area code 319-527-6199. That's the number to call. I said a 319-527-6199. Yes, 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 y'all. I said a 319-527-6199. Yeah, get on the line. I said a 319-527-6199. Yeah, get your shine, baby. Uh. 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 Get your shine, baby. Oh, get your shine, baby. Oh, get your shine, baby. Oh, get your shine, baby. Three one nine five two seven six one nine nine, baby. This is the daily go get a business show. Call three one nine five two seven six one nine nine in order to get on the show live, live and direct, and you can say it how you mean it. You know what I mean? If you need to, if you need to let it out, holler, scream, curse, cuss, swear, you can do it here. Don't have to pull out your hair. Uh. And make sure that y'all hit that like button, man. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share the show. Like, subscribe. Uh. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. So, how many of y'all have done it? Because you ain't going to tell me that none of y'all ain't never, uh, ain't never held out on no man. Some of y'all might have held out on a dude that y'all was just in a in a uh, physical relationship. Like maybe y'all was just friends with benefits. Like, all right, we friends with benefits, but I ain't gonna give you the full benefits of being my man. Now, if you if you ready to if you ready to you know take me on as your girl, or whatever, then you can get the full Monty. But other than that, then you know I'm gonna let you hit it from the back. And missionary, and that's it. You ain't getting no, you ain't getting no, no extra specials. You're not getting no, you're not getting no, 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 no ketchup, no ranch dressing, no blue cheese, no Italian dressing, no, 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 no vinaigrette. You're not getting none of that. No French, no nothing. You're not, you, you're not, nah, you're not, no mustard, no, no, you, I can't give you none of those toppings. I can't give you none of them dip. I can't let you dip in the, I can't get in the, the dippings. And I ain't going front. That sounds reasonable to me. But even that will fall short. You know what I'm saying? Because what I've, what, what, what I've witnessed in situations where you're just friends with benefits or in situations where you are going together or whatever, good sex seems to bring out better sex in other people. So if you giving it good, guess what's going to happen? You're going to receive it back good. If you're giving it good, you're going to get it back good. So they might have meant to hold out. Like, I am, I, first of all, first of all, I'm not going to catch feelings. He not going to make me. He, he not going to. Uh -uh. I mean, I ain't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You put the good sex in, you're going to get the, the good sex out. So all of that holding back and all that shit, that shit is out the window. And, you know, that doesn't apply to y'all lame, lame dick niggas. I understand. You, you don't understand what we talk. I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm not getting it, getting it, but I get it. I understand it. You know, like we not. No, but yeah. So, you know, all that holding back. You I'm thinking that you have to ask yourself. 
what kind of person am I if I have it to give and I want it and I want to give it, but I'm not giving it in order to force them to do something that they are evidently not ready to do. Like maybe you'll blow them, but you won't swallow. I mean, I mean, that's un in a way that's understandable because a lot of women don't swallow. It's really just a visual thing. Like you ain't got to swallow it as long as you finish it. Like you don't get no extra, you don't get no extra sensation out of uh, when, when they swallow. It's all visual. It's all mental. Because what they swallow and they already came out. Now, if they don't, if they don't do it to the point where it comes out, then all right, now, now you have something to to weigh it, weigh weigh against, you know, whatever. But all that swallowing shit, I, don't, I know personally, I don't give a shit if you don't swallow. I give a shit if you don't finish. Shit, I don't swallow either. I will get right out of the way. <laughs> Fuck out of here. I've been known to dodge it. Like, you know, you, you see it coming. I, I, yo, you get, so I don't hear them like, oh, how you going to move? No, but I finished though, right? Women don't be giving a fuck. They want to make sure you finish. Like, all right. Listen. Oh yeah, by that time they be dead anyway. Dead, you know, you know, yeah. Women talk about men dying after they night. Shit, they die too. I've I seen plenty of bodies, but see what it is—you don't let them die. That's when you take unfair advantage of, like. No, nah, fuck that. You ain't dead. You playing dead. You ain't dead. Get up. <laughs> Drag him off the bed by the ankle. Man, they like that kind of shit. But anyway, anyway, don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. Get up, shorty. Fuck out of here. Get up. Oh, Veronica, Veronica. Oh, Veronica, girl. What's up, Ronnie? And Fran Gosen, you are my friend. What's going on? How you feeling? And Cherry Cherry, Cinderella, day to day. Well, it's the woman day to day with fame. Cherry Cherry is all up in the house. How you feeling? Good to see me some you. But yeah, man, what, 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 so what y'all got for me? What, what? I mean, what we doing? What we doing? What y'all got? You know, don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. I know that your mothers told y'all that. Your aunties told y'all that. Your grand grandmothers taught y'all that. Your old head, you know, the the y'all y'all the um your godparents, your godmother, somebody told told y'all that. No, save a little bit for blah blah blah. Why why would he buy the cow when he getting the milk for free? Buy the cow when he getting the milk for free. Why would he buy the cow when he getting the milk for free? Cow when he getting the milk for free. Got getting the milk for free. Uh, yo, getting the milk for free. Why buy the cow getting the milk for free? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why a man would would would, would buy the cow even though he getting the milk for free. First of all, he might not have had the cow for the milk. And everybody don't get milk for free. So let's say he like milk. He getting the milk for free. You think he want the next man to get the milk for free? I wish I had a carton of milk in here. I would do a milk example. Got no milk. Damn, I got no visuals, son. Duh. I got a colon ring, dog. I got a 
Y'all look like I got no cholerine. I mean, I got cholerine. Y'all look like I got no milk. But yeah, here's the reason why a man would would uh would buy the cow even though he get the milk for free. Because men don't want no other bulls to get the cow. Now his cow, like this cow do everything I want her to do. Like this cow is all that. You see the ass on this cow? You see the udders on this cow? This cow got them udders. You think I want the next man? You know what I mean? Pulling on my pulling on my shorty udders, getting all that free ass. That, that milk good as shit. Hey, have you ever had milk that's not homogenized? You know, milk straight from the cow. You ever yeah, it's just it tastes sweet. It tastes sweet. It tastes sweet. Back in the day before they homogenized the milk, you used to have to shake the milk up in order to, you know, because they used to separate like the milk from the cream. Now that you don't you don't do it no more. It's called it's homogenized. So they they mixed it all in. But back in the milkman days, you had to shake up the milk. From what I understand, I'm, that's a little before my time. But nonetheless, nonetheless, a man don't want the next man getting his milk. So he's going to come through. But if he never tasted the milk in the first place, you think he going to buy a cow? Would you buy a cow? You don't even know how, if, the, if the cow can produce milk. Me? I'm going to get a cow with some nice udders on her. Like, yo, she might have big udders, but even if she ain't got like big, giant, juicy udders, she going to have some nice udders. Like, yo, these udders sit up. You see how the udders sit, sit, sit up under the cow? I, yo, I ain't going to let the next man. You, yo, keep your hands off my cow. No, you ain't getting no milk from Nigga, I will. Yo, I'll slump you out here touching my cow. Like she be doing, she be moving right. Like yo, I you know, I get my cow by herself, man. She be she be moving. You gonna let the next man make your cow move? I'm real shit. Y'all not gonna let the next man let my cow move. Make my cow moo? You ain't mooing for nobody else. You ain't mooing for none of these bulls out here. Fuck them bulls. Fuck them. I'm the bull. You my cow. Moo, bitch. Moo. Moo. Let me, hear, let me get some moose. Get some good cow sounds in here. You, YouTuber, let me get that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Let's go. What we got? <laughs> All right. Let's go. Hold on. Hold on. What we got? Ten hours. I don't need that shit. All right. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Oh. One more. Come on, Bessie. Come on, Bessie. Come on, Bessie. Yeah. 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 What y'all know? You know what I'm saying? You're going to let the next man make it. Yo, know side Nah. You're going to let the next man make it. Yo. You yeah, hear Bessie? You ain't going to let the next. You let the next bull get behind Bessie. So I'm getting the milk. I'm getting the moo. I'm getting the milk in the moo. I'm getting the milk in the moo. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to come through and I'm going to represent. So, yeah. I'm 
buying a cow. I'm getting the milk for free. I got the milk, but I'm I, I want to make sure that I get the milk that the next man don't get none of the milk I got, and that I'm getting the moo. He ain't getting no moo. He ain't getting no moo. No moo. No moo. Mm -mm, get your own moo. Go get your own moo. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here, nigga. So this is why. This is this is what it is. Ansel Jones says the cow will turn into ground beef. Woo! <laughs> Rocket said, hold on. Resuscitate them <laughs> back to life. Use the old phrase. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me make sure I get some of your comments. Hold on, let me see what y'all talking about. Let me see what y'all talking about. Um, <laughs> Cass says, oh, Lordy, the visuals are coming. <laughs> Damn, I, I ain't got no milk. Y'all lucky, y'all lucky. You know what I mean? All you got to know is that I'm, I'm going to utter a word. Got my udders. Yeah, she got them pretty ass udders and shit. You know what I'm saying? Getting all that milk, that good shit. Stacy, Stacy White, what's going on? And Sucre Chutwa, Sucre JTX, what's going on, man? Good to see me, some you. All right. Veronica says, probably had half a calf so 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 she can be bred and milked. I don't know what I'm saying. No, I said, no, I said, Judy got your cow and gone. <laughs> Jody, Jody got your cow and gone. Nah, 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 Joe. Jody, nah, say, nah, nah. <laughs> y'all ain't got to worry about me. Y'all ain't got to worry about me. But you, if y'all want to say, don't give your boyfriend the, the husband treatment, to me, that sounds crazy. But I know some people, you know, some people really believe that shit. But I'm thinking you got to be like kind of a cold fish. You got to be kind of a cold fish to hold out on sexual pleasure. Listen, you might not, you might not co-sign a loan for your uh for your uh, boyfriend or buy him a car or something like that. These are things that you might do for your husband, but you probably wouldn't do for your um for your uh your boyfriend. I can understand that. But physical things I can't understand. And when we normally talk about the milk for free, we normally talk about the physical things. We're not talking about the the financial things. You know, I, I guess back in the days when they was talk when they made up that that little cliche about why bought a cow when you can get the milk for free. That was probably in the days where women wasn't getting money out here and they couldn't buy a nigga a, a brand new Maxima or some shit. You know what I mean? A little, a little QX45 truck. You know what I'm saying? Probably couldn't buy him that back then. You know, maybe it was back in the day when women wasn't getting it. They wasn't six figure. They wasn't six figure uh, um, making like that. Shit. I'm impressed by what some of them can do with five figures, you know, six streams, six streams of income, but with a, with a, a five figure main salary, money coming from all over the place. You got Catholic school money. She got uh, um, Jordan, Jordan or, or uh, sneakerhead, sneakerhead money. You know, the sneakerhead money, that shit is, sneakerhead money serious. That's just serious. That's just serious. You know, serious game of money. You know, he need he need a PS5 and an Xbox One. You know, he need all that shit. He need extra shit. He going to tournaments and all of that. Basketball, football, camp money. Like, yeah, if, if, if my uh if my son gonna go and go to the pros, he gotta play around other other 
other uh athletes that are going to on, that are on their way to the pros. You gotta go to you gotta go to the basketball camp, you gotta go to football camp. All the all the pros who have gone to the NBA have gone to those football and basketball camps. When you're not in that, when you're not in that world, you don't understand nothing about it. Because I had brothers who was in that world. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My baby brother, he he played with Rashid Wallace and all of that basketball camps. Shit was serious. Best talent, the best talent out there. Okay, so, so, Cal Chamberlain says it's not always the physical things. Right. It's not always the physical things. I'm thinking that when they said, why why give, why, why, why would he buy the cow when he getting the milk for free? I'm thinking that the milk that they was talking about was the physical things. Like, don't go down on them. Don't let them hit you in the booty hole. Don't let them, I don't know, whatever. I don't know, whatever. Damn. But uh, nonetheless, when it really all comes down to it, you're probably going to go where your heart tells you to go. So you're probably going to give as much to your man or your woman as you feel like they should have. I mean, just keeping it a buck, some people feel really good when they do something for their man or their woman. I know plenty of women who feel great when they assist their man, when they do something for him, you know, do something for him that they know that that, that he likes. You telling you telling her that she shouldn't do that, and I know you know how some men are with they with they women, you know, like yeah, I just bought my girl this this fly ass tennis bracelet, you know, this shit fly. I've had niggas brag to me like, yo, oh check this shit out, yo, you see this shit, shit four carries. Like, yo, that shit hot. Four carries. Four carries. Princess cuts the big squares. I'm like, oh that thing hot. Yeah, you spend, a, spend a, a pretty penny on that. And that was for his girl. That wasn't for his wife. Keep it a buck for you. <laughs> Keep it a buck with you. I damn, hold on. Am I about to say this shit? You know what? It might be fair to do this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I've probably seen more men go all out financially for their girlfriends than I've seen them go out for their wives. Now, it could be because I've known more people that were unmarried growing up, of course, than I did being married. So, you know, me being unmarried all my life, I'm not around married people a whole lot. So that might limit my my scope of of uh, involvement and and uh, and information, you know, because I wasn't in that world. But. You know, I, I didn't know I've I've actually heard men talk about what their wives didn't deserve and how they ain't doing this for her and. Yeah, I have heard that shit. Niggas be mad at their wives. But they don't be mad at their girlfriends. They will go out. They will go. They will go down to the Diamond District and, and ball out. They will buy those. They will go ahead and buy those shoes, those red bottoms. They'll do that shit. Hmm. Oh well. Oh well, oh well, oh well. Naked HD, yes. You trying to get up in here, man. Emily on your ass. Emily, she on your ass. You ain't coming up in here. It won't last. <laughs> it won't last. All right. And so Jones says, I was on my my block fit football team. Block football team? Y'all, you, your block had a had a football team? Or does, does that say black football team? Let me see. I said block. Okay. 
NFL dreams came later. Okay, 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 okay. Bobby Hill, C say, Bob Hill, C say, what's going on, my squan? What's going on? What's going on? But yeah, man. Don't give your boyfriend the husband treatment. Oh, we have a call on the line. Call up with the last number 7019. Welcome to the Daily Go Get Emism Show. Thank you for holding. What is on your mind this evening? This evening. Good evening. I think I have a question. Um, about something you were saying about um, couples and their um, sex life. So, from your perspective, you think that there shouldn't be any limitations um, in a couple's sexual relationship as far as um, whether they are married or not married? As you think there shouldn't be limitations? Limitations on what? Like what one party is willing to do. Okay, I think that individually you may have some things that you might want to, that you might not be ready to do. All right, just like, okay, you know how, you know how some people say that you should have, you should always have somebody that you can say, that you can tell all of your business to, that you can, you know, you know, tell all your secrets to with all of that. And I think that to a certain degree that that's true. But I also, but I don't think that you should be obligated to do that. You know, maybe it's cool that that you have somebody that you feel that you can trust to that degree, but you shouldn't have anybody that requires you to tell them everything, even if they are going to keep your secrets for you. So I think the same thing applies to when you're talking about um, when you when you're talking about your man or your woman, and whether you should whether you should give everything to them whether it's physically or financially or emotionally whatever um um rather than waiting for them to become your spouse like for me personally mm-hmm. i'm not sure if there are a lot of things i would would hold out with um from my girlfriend or or um um or my wife because Although I've never been married, I don't see the benefit in being halfway in. Either you in or you're not. Either you down or you're not. Either you trust or you don't. And if you don't, you're not going to trust them as your husband or wife either. You, mm-hmm. you don't. Well, I think I think I think there are definitely um, levels to things um, because. Quite naturally, like there are some things you may not share with um, with someone who you are dating or going with, regardless of how much you trust that person. Like, I wouldn't give somebody that I'm um, dating, you know, my financial information unless there was some benefit to it, or you know, like there are certain expenses I wouldn't share with somebody who I'm in as opposed to somebody that I'm married to. So because there's there's no benefit to it. And you know, and because there's no um I don't know, anything that happened, I mean anything can happen in a marriage too, but at least there's some, in my opinion, there's some recourse in, in marriage. Right. So mm-hmm. if it's just a relationship, you know, sometimes what a person takes away and even if that the takeaway is something um, physical or financial, it may be a little bit more difficult to get it back, depending on what you know about that person. Right. So, um, so I think that there definitely are are levels to things, and you know, you know, we, if you're married to someone, of course, you have the option of telling them everything. Um, if you feel like that person would would hold your your secrets or hold your information and you know not share it with the world, but most times when a person is married, you know the two of your finances when we're talking about finances, 
or or sort of um, merge together. So they have just as much to lose as you do. In a relationship, not so much. Right. And and I agree that the state definitely would say don't treat your boyfriend like your husband. You know what I'm saying? Because (laughs) the state is like, look, the state is not emotionally invested. So they don't give a fuck. They're looking at it from a purely financial standpoint, which is understandable. For them, for them, Mm -hmm. your union is just a contract. For them, your union is more business oriented than anything else. For them, like they don't, they've never, Mm -hmm. they've never cried because they weren't treated right by by your husband or your wife. You know what I'm saying? They've never mm-hmm. they they weren't there when when your children were born and and uh and, and and maybe maybe they weren't as healthy at the time uh, at at the time of birth that, um as they would grow to be as they got better cuz they were premature. Things like that. The the state is not invested mm-hmm. in none of that shit. So they don't care. They're mm-hmm. just telling you that look you better think about your financial situation. You better think about the end, what happens, whether we're talking about the end as far as uh, your separation and divorce or with, whether we're talking about the end as far as one of y'all dying because two of those, one of those things is guaranteed to happen. Y'all may stay together forever, but one of y'all is going to die. And the, one who, <laughs> and the one who survives gets all the marbles. So... Your mm-hmm. boyfriend or your girlfriend ain't getting no marbles unless you have a living mm-hmm. will that you secure them some marbles for, which some people have done. Mm-hmm. You know, but, but, so I understand what the state is saying from from a personal standpoint. I guess what I'm really talking about is um, your treatment of the person that you're with, because I'm thinking that if you don't believe or if you don't feel that your man or your woman woman is worthy of of being treated royally or at least decently then why would you be with him and sure that may sound simple for me to say about somebody else because once again i'm not emotionally invested whether um whether the emotions are positive or negative so it might be easy for me to say well why would you be with somebody that you don't even love like that but other people may say Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's none of your business. The The bottom line is I'm with them for whatever reasons that I'm with them and I'll treat them the way I think they ought to be treated. Okay, I can accept that. But don't, oh. you think, hmm? don't you think there could be, depending on could be a vast difference in what you would consider um, decent and royal because... For me personally, I think that's a big difference. Like, I can treat somebody decent, and decent to me just means, you know, I treat them good, you know, and and as long as that is reciprocated, right? However, um, if I'm talking about treating somebody royally, then that means there aren't too many things that I wouldn't do for that person, right? So, and and that doesn't come with, you know, just somebody we just shooting the shit or, you know, we just been dating for even a year, depending on the person. So um, I think that, you know, it depends on what you built with that person, you know, emotionally, um, physically, intimately, it, it just depends. And I don't think unless you verbally or unless you verbalize the things that you won't do, the other person won't necessarily know unless they specifically ask you to do something and you, and you said, no, I, I'm not going to do that because you're not my husband. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't think that, that somebody who isn't being treated well or, well, let me just put it like this. You don't think that a person can tell when, when somebody is holding out on them? Um, I think they would have to see examples or you have shared something that you've done maybe in your past relationship mm-hmm. or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, um, for right. that person to be able to compare. Right. Right. OK, well, check this out. Um, I was thinking about what you what you just said when you were talking about 
being treated decently or treated good versus being treated royally. And I was thinking, mm-hmm. I, I, I might, I might, I think I see it a little bit differently. Like I, mm-hmm. I would say that when you treat somebody well or treat somebody decently, you 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 might be treating them in a way like you may be looking at the things that you know that they need that they may not even recognize that mm-hmm. they need. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. you may be taking mm-hmm. care of them in a in a special way that they may not even recognize um, because they haven't been treated like that before or because they didn't even really realize that they were deficient in that area. You know what I mean? And you identified it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when you treat somebody mm-hmm. royally, I'm and, and, and this is just my opinion. If you're treating somebody royally, mm-hmm. I'm thinking more along the lines of you may be um, heading more towards a submission towards them with them. You know what I'm saying? Because when I think about when I think about royalty, I'm thinking about kings and queens, actual kings and queens, you know what I'm saying? And how everybody has to do what they want, whether they like it or not, whether they think it's a good idea or not. You know what I'm saying? Everything is about submission when you're talking about the royal family and all of that. Everybody caters to them. Everybody bows down to them. Nobody's allowed to question what what they do or who they are or the way that they they move. So royal. Okay. Well, I was just going to say royally to me, to me, sounds more like it gives me more of the feeling of submission where whereas treating somebody decently may not be a submission um, type of situation because submission may not be. It may not be an issue or it may not be the desired effect. It, it may not be, it may not apply to your situation. But that's just what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? You totally agree? I thought you would. And you know <laughs> what? So so it, your example of um royalty, um, and you said total, you basically said a total submission. So are you saying that because that sounds um, very similar to what I said in the sense that um, but you're saying it in a way that the person doesn't have the option to say no. Yeah. Yes or no. Yeah. Well, so, so, sort of like that. Yeah. Pretty much along those lines. Like for example, like if, to, to treat somebody royally Maybe you you're treating them in a way that you really don't think is a good idea for them. For example, let's say um, you, your your man has a drinking problem, or 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 he's a weed head, or he has a drug problem. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, and and he 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 sends you on alcohol runs, or or he or he requires you to let him do things. Um through his addiction or his habit that you don't really think are good ideas. For example, like, all right, so you know that it's not a good idea to let let, let him drink and drive. It's not that he doesn't drink and drive, but you don't think it's a good idea. But because, because you, you know, you feel like, well, this is my man and, you know, I, regardless a woman is supposed to treat a man like this and this is my man or this is my husband or whatever. So he's going to get the royal treatment. So even though, even though it's a good chance that we might, um, we, you know, we might um, drive our way on the highway to heaven uh, um, it, with him behind the wheel. Fuck it. I'm getting it anyway. That would, that's more like royally to me. Like, even though you don't agree with it, even though you think it's a bad idea, you're going to follow his lead. Even though he's not acting like a very good leader. That's more of a royal treatment. No, I can't agree with that. Okay. I, what, I can't well, that's what that. I was saying. That's what I want to. Okay. With, I, I want to. No. <laughs> well, all okay. I'm saying is that's because what comes to my mind when I'm thinking treating somebody royally versus treating somebody decently. I would choose decently over royally any day because I don't want to take away um I don't take I don't want to take away from myself what I know to be something good in order to uh, give somebody else their way, which might not be a good way. Well, I don't think that that anything someone does that is to the detriment of a person who they claim to love and care about 
it could be anything but but evil. Like that doesn't that doesn't help a person. And it like if you're if you knowingly um do something that you know is gonna hurt that person, how is that showing that you you love and care about them? Because you you would do the opposite. To me that's not treating someone loyally because you you basically are assisting them in their own death. So I don't know that that um well it definitely wouldn't be my opinion or you know what I would think of when, when I think of treating somebody royally. Um but I understand everybody has their you know it has a weakness for people that they, they care about. And sometimes you may submit to doing things that um that may not necessarily have helped that person. Right. Um but I wouldn't I wouldn't coin that as being something or being a treatment that I would consider royalty. Like that's not what I think of when I think of royalty. Um okay. I do agree that it would it would like people normally submit to um people in, in royalty situations, but I don't necessarily think of it from that aspect. Uh-huh. Um yeah. See, I, I my I concern know. is that you're still using your brain. When the king or the <laughs> queen say what they want or when they say what to do, you can't use your brain. It ain't up to you. You can't do the opposite well, of what they want. Well, that's why I'm not in, in that situation. Although I do have uh, a king who tends to uh, dominate in a lot of situations. However, um, it, it, it don't get to that extreme. Well, you know, um, people around here seems to think seem to think that I dominate and I don't, and and I never have. All mm-hmm. I do is give way. All I do is submit. All I do is stand down. I'm like the most easygoing guy that I know. But, but every now and then, <laughs> the creator, the creator compels me to use my brain and I must submit to the creator. I must. I don't have a choice. So I submit to the creator and, and I do what, what I think is right. But, but if I was, if I was, um, under a king or a queen in their kingdom, then I would not be able to use my better judgment. I would have to use theirs because they are higher than me. And whether I like it or not, or whether I think it's a good idea or not, I would have to submit to them and give way to, 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 uh, to, uh, what, what they think is, is good or, or necessary. So, so I would always choose. That's interesting because I would have. That's interesting because I would have paid you to put yourself as the king in that in that whole little scenario. But that's interesting that you chose to be the um you chose to be the submissive one. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not a king. I'm not a king. I'm not a king. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm not a king. I'm I'm more of um I'm more prince like. You know what I mean? I'm the man next to the man next to the man next to the man. I ain't even the first prince in line. I'm like um, the little baby prince. You know, uh, Harry, what's his name, um, Harry? Philip, the little, the little young prince married to the, the white, jo- I mean the black Joan. They have, you know. The, yeah, like, like, Leave him alone. I'm saying he'll never be king, right? Because he, he like way down in the, uh, and you know, he have to knock off one of his brothers. You know, like his dad and grandma did to his mom. But anyway, so he got it in him. He could, he could fuck around, be king. All right, but the bottom line, um, the bottom line is, how do you hold back from doing something nice or special for somebody that you want to do something nice or special for? That's what it comes down to for me. Like other people advise you to do it, but like, how you gonna do it if you don't really feel like? Like that's what you should do. Like for example, if you, if your man asks you, let's say, um, all right, uh, Christmas is coming up. For example, 
let's say your man asked you mm-hmm. to get give, give him a, a buy him a, a pricey a pricey gift something like um mm-hmm. what's what's a new gadget or or something what's what, what's out right now that's expensive you know what let's say he asked you to get him one of those really expensive um drones you know those you know those those mm-hmm. drones you know they take the four 8k pictures and all that kind of stuff you know you know, some of those yeah. drones can get very expensive. So let's say it was like a sixteen, sixteen hundred dollar drone. Now you have the you have the money to do it. Not necessarily saying that you can afford it, because there's a difference between between mm-hmm. being able to buy something and being able to afford something. But let's say that's what he wanted, and he's been talking about this drone. Like, yo, I mean, I want this drone. This thing real nice. Uh, it, it has such a long range. Like, I can, I can. I can send my drone all the way to Texas on one charge and 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 have it come back. I can take pictures of the Alamo and 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 have my drone come back. You know what I'm saying? That that's that's what I want. I want that sixteen hundred dollar um drone. You know, mm-hmm. you might feel like you know what. You know, my baby been working hard. He been doing his thing. You know, he treats me. He treats me really great. Anytime I want something, um. You know, he uh he, he comes through whatever he's supportive. I think I'm gonna buy him that drone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like your mom, your aunts, your sisters, and all that, they might be like, man, sixteen hundred dollars, tell him to grow the fuck up. You don't need no damn drone. You know what I'm saying? You better get him you better get him like you know, the matchbox, you know, uh the, the, I don't know, the Atrex uh remote control car, or something like that, whatever. You know, they might not think that that um, a gift like that for your man, not even your husband, is a, is a good idea. They might not think it's a good idea, but for you, you like, I'm on my way to the drone store to you know pick this shit up. You know, they got him at Best Buy. I'm going down Best Buy. I get this drone for my man. You know, like, fuck it. It's gonna set me back a little bit or whatever, mm-hmm. but I'll make it up. I'll make it up during tax time or whatever. You know, you might feel like, yeah. I want my man to have a drone, so he getting a drone. Like, how do you stop yourself? I mean, yeah, he's no, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Me you know. huh? Me personally, um, if I if I'm with somebody and I want them to have something, then I'm gonna I'm gonna get it for them. I don't consider my in terms of gifts, right? I. I don't consider myself to be the type of person that is going to be like, um, you know, I'm going to hold out on, on giving him something unless he does X, Y, and Z, right? Um, now, on the same token, you know, I have to be really serious about a person in order to shell out that type of money, right? So, and in that sense, there's definitely gonna be limits to what I will spend on a person if I'm if if it's just a situation where we we're dating or if it's a situation where we've been dating for a few years now and you know I know that the um we do things for each other, we share things, you know, that type of thing. Um, but I can't say that it hasn't been a situation where um I was early dating someone and I bought them something that I thought they needed or that I wanted them to have. But that's just me. You know, I like giving people gifts. I like shopping. So that's not a big deal for me. Okay. Um, however, there are other things that I place limits on. Right. So, for instance, um, I place limits on. Um, well, I used to place <laughs> limits on you know, what I will do sexually. I, I have done that. And I've also placed limits on who I expose my children to. Um, that's definitely something that I place limits on. Okay. Well, with the with the with the uh children, I don't think that that's unreasonable, you know, within limits or within mm-hmm. within understandable limits. You understand what I mean? Like I wouldn't want I wouldn't uh suggest that anybody limit the positive experiences that their children can have, you know, through other, through other um, people. But uh, as far as, as far as uh, sexually is concerned, like, I don't, I'm 
thinking, honestly, I'm thinking, if you don't trust your man enough to let yourself go with him physically as his girlfriend, I don't think you're going to do it when he becomes your husband. You know what I'm saying? Like, because what really changes when when you when you get married from when you're going together? Like, if you didn't trust him when you were when you were um, when y'all were just going together, the stakes actually get higher after you marry him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like I don't like when people make it seem like to most men, marriage is like like most men view marriage as a trap because. Most men don't view marriage as a trap because for most men, by the time they get married, they ha- they have put complete trust in their woman anyway, even if it don't seem like it, because they understand mm-hmm. they understand what the stakes are. But you can best believe, you know, there's not there, there isn't going to be anything that he does physically for his wife that he's not going to do with his girlfriend. Shoot, that's that's honestly the thing that gets a lot of a lot of men in trouble. Like, wait, you do the same shit with your girl that you did with your wife? You know, when women find that kind of shit out, it's like right. you know. <laughs> no, but I think I think there there are definitely I, I do think that men um um place limits on it because if you think about the fact that um if a man isn't um commit to one particular woman or he may date several different women, but he's only going to share certain things with the one that he feels that he can trust, right? So, um, and even if even if he is married in that situation, more than likely the one that he's going to trust with um, all of his bank account information is the one that he's married to because the other one could get him in trouble. You know, I'm going to tell you, I think that the more, the the longer men get into a situation, the more they start to let go or spread the ball around. Because like Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, I would have totally agreed with you. You know, like wifey Mm -hmm. get everything. And when I say wifey, I don't mean wife. You know, a lot of people get these terms. A lot of times, I'm I'm glad you understand, but a lot of people get this twisted. Wifey is a serious girlfriend. Wife doesn't require an, a why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like your wifey is your girl that that you treat and feel like like you know uh, like is a wife. But there ain't no paper side. There's no preacher. There's there's nothing. But but like I said, mm-hmm. like about 20, 30, 20 or 30 years ago, I would have said exactly what you're saying. I would have co-signed that. I would have said, yeah, a man will, you know, have one John that he that he totally puts all his trust in, like his bottom, like his bottom chick, and everybody else gets the scraps. But it's not true. I think as men get older and they start developing more of a pattern of being able to juggle more than one, they start spreading the ball around more. And I, and I'm only going to use mm-hmm. and I'm only going to use my dad may rest in peace as an example. I mean mm-hmm. he ain't have no I was like where the boundaries? <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I, I I'm not saying I agreed with it, but it was what it was. Right. And you know, like you can argue, you can argue all day about what you want somebody to be. You cannot argue with what they are and what he and what he was, he displayed. So, you know, where I would have thought, like, well, I mean, but you're married. Why would you expose the other women that you're not married to the same to the same shit that you would your wife? Where's the exclusivity? Um, right. you know, his whole his whole thing was like, um, anybody I got a baby by is my wife. Papers or no papers. I'm like, so mm-hmm. why so why have papers with any of them? You're like, well, right. she came first. <laughs> it's like, right. you know, you know, 
it wasn't. Yeah, it, 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 it was. It, it wasn't exactly like that, but it kind of was. Okay. Like when you, you when you stripped away all when you unpeeled the banana, that's what you got. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's it. The banana, the orange, the the, the artichoke. You know, and so so for some men, they might play the right way, and if you consider. Mm -hmm. If you consider that brand of infidelity the right way, but for a lot of men, I think they start trusting more than one. But then, but but I but I would agree that there are levels because his day one, he might really treat you know she might have access maybe like what you were saying she might have access to all the passwords the the the, the combination to the safe. But that don't mean that there ain't other little safes out there that 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 the big that big mama don't know nothing about. You understand what I mean? So it's hard to say. Right. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. I, I can agree with that. Yeah, um right. and and I don't I don't think that there are there is um one one um one way that that type of stuff is done. You you definitely gonna find um, situations or examples of a lot of different things, but I guess I was just speaking from like a majority standpoint because you you are going to have examples where um, men or women, um, you know, spread it around, right? Mm -hmm. um, but to me, a lot of those situations when it when it all comes down. Uh, a lot of those men suffer the more the most harm or or loss because they did just that, right? So yeah. I think um, in terms of things being um, like twenty years ago, you know, men didn't have as much um, access to you know bank accounts everywhere and electronic access and stuff like that. So. I think the difference was you might have um, a man back then had, you know, multiple houses and visit each houses and spread his time around and, you know, things like that. Now, whereas, you know, nowadays it might be a little, a little difficult to keep that hush for a long period of time without each of them finding out at some point, some kind of way because of um, electronic devices, social media, and and let's face it, you know, some men just aren't very smart um, <laughs> when it comes to spreading themselves around in yeah. this great day and age. <laughs> so, yeah, go um, ahead. so, yeah, I do agree, but, you know, yeah, it's, it's, they're it's, definitely on levels. Yeah, there, there are definitely levels to it, but when it all comes down to it, you know, it's human nature to follow your heart. So people can give you the best yeah. advice out there, but always, but but it's going to become apparently or abundantly clear to the individual that, yeah, you yes, you gave me all of the X and O of uh, advice that I could possibly um have. You gave me the best advice, but your your heart don't beat. In your chest for my girl, like mine does. What? Your dick don't get hmm. hard for my girl, like mine does. She don't make you, you know, she don't make you want to build families and and show up and do nice things and and be there for her, like she does for me. So you're giving me, you're giving me life advice, or you're giving me logistical advice. And it doesn't apply with my where my heart where my heart um um exists. So let me ask you this: when when we get to the point where we are holding out on our men or our women, are we taking our heart out of it and inserting our mind? You know what I'm saying? Are we throwing more testosterone in the game? Then estrogen. Does the head take I over? When, <laughs> I think usually when people put um put 
um, limitations on things that they would do. Um, it's probably as a result of some some past hurt or, you know, something that went wrong in the past and them trying to prevent it from happening again. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, yes, yes, I do think you take your heart out of it because a lot of times your heart can lead you, <laughs> you know, in the most dangerous of places. And, and, you know, where as your, your mind could probably, you know, give you some better advice in, in a lot, in a lot of situations. So, you know, your heart will make you do some things that, you know, go against your better judgment. Um, whereas your mind, you know, if your, if your, your head is on straight, would, um, cause you to, you know, take a pause. So, um, so yeah, I think you would take your heart out of it. Um, but I also think that it could be as a result of something um, that happened or they're trying to prevent something from happening or, you know, putting limits on it because it's like, okay, well, if he doesn't do this for me, then I'm not going to do this for him. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the question that I have um, is how is it that your heart has been taking center stage all this time and it's been overriding your head and all of a sudden your head coming and like, no, I got this heart. How, how, how is it any room for your head when the heart has, has taken over the whole room? It painted the whole room red. It's like Valentine's day up in this joint. How, how, <laughs> well, I mean, you, maybe, because maybe you could explain me that. Because money changes things. Because money changes things? Mm-hmm. But what about the chicks? Some people. What, but, all right. So what about the chicks that be giving they giving they man all of their tax money? Um, you know, you and doing tax time, which I think is a noble idea. Because he don't flip it. I, I mean, I, sometimes he don't flip it. He flipped that shit right to the right to the used car dealer. Mm -hmm. I mean, hold on, we have a we have a call on the line. We're gonna have to get it over with quick too, because we we um you know we 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 up against it. All right, caller with the last numbers two one nine two. Welcome to the Daily Go Getimism Show. What's on your mind this evening, my brother? What's good? Shalom to both of the parties. On the I just want to start off with saying I agree on the topic of um, I agree on both of y'all about the topic, uh, but I wanted to put my little part in saying that. Uh, I think that if, if you can withhold, say, for instance, uh, your heart or, you know what I'm saying, or you can withhold loving somebody a certain to a certain distance or to a certain extent. Um, say, for instance, uh, like you said before, um, messing with somebody or doing something for somebody that you really love or waiting until you get married, I feel like if you can withhold, then it also shows that you can withdraw as well at any time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it might work that way and it might not. See, see, this is to me, this is such a subjective type of um of a situation here. You know, it, it's going to be different for, for, for most people. <clears throat> That's why I think it's a little irresponsible to tell somebody not to treat they their boyfriend like a husband. Um, the same or or treat your, your your girlfriend like your wife. Um, the same way I think that it's it's irresponsible to say um that um you should you should give everything and not think about it, you know what I'm saying? Because when it really all comes down to it, I really believe that there will be situations in which you're gonna follow your heart, and there are gonna be situations where you're gonna you're gonna think about what happened at certain times other times when you may have followed your heart and then issues of trust and reliability may come in even if they hadn't come in before you know what i'm saying like how many times do you have to get robbed before you start you know investing in the security system or at least at least a lock you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. and, re and remember locks are for honest people any thief will tell you that 90 seconds you know, dishonest people, thieves, thieves don't care about locks. They don't care about security systems. They don't care about none of that. Their, their, their job is to bypass all of that shit. 
you know, when, when a person is honest, they see a lock or the security system. They're like, oh, no, this ain't, I ain't, you know, there ain't going to be no opportunity here. I ain't into all that, you know? They're going to respect that. But for somebody who is, is, um, is for somebody who is predatory, for somebody who, who is, um, opportunistic, they don't care about locks. They don't care about alarm systems. They don't care about none of that. They care about getting whatever they, they can get and, and taking all of it. And that's what they'll do. So if it, if, if you know that you're dealing with somebody like that, even though your love for them might make you still cater to them in some kind of way, there's also a good chance that you might um oh, this shit. Um there's a, there's also a good chance that you may remember exactly who you're dealing with when when you're dealing with them at some point. It might not be, second. it might not it might not always be the case where you just throw caution to the wind. And and there are th- there can be times when you feel like you feel like my man or my woman might have did this to her or him, but they wouldn't do it to me. Of course, we're going to be wrong m- more times than not. But those are the kind of things that your heart tells you. You know, like, yeah, he'll do that to him or her because I even helped them do that to him or her. But they, they wouldn't do it to me. Totally, totally bypassing, bypassing good, good judgment and, and, and logic. However, that's that's what we're up against sometimes. Listen, I want to thank both of y'all. Hey, bro, I want- yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I no, wanted, I wanted I wanted to step on on this real quick before before we leave. I remember y'all was talking about uh, royalty and getting like uh, difference between royalty and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. I, I feel what you're saying. This is this is the reason why I say I agree with both of y'all. But I so I hard I wholly agree with you because no matter no matter what like, and this is what you not again they they trained us to not even recognize royalty you know what i'm saying because it's just like i like i said like i mentioned to you before i'm not gonna go in your castle and tell you how to run your castle you know what i'm saying like there's places in this world that still that still deals with royalty you know what i'm saying and the united states made it to where hey you don't have to bow down to no man or you don't have to you know what i'm saying that go accordingly like act accordingly how you supposed to act around royalty you don't have to do that that's because the american americanized us to thinking that hey we are bigger than royalty nobody's bigger than us nobody can be over us uh-huh. but that's the reason why they're mistaken as that you know what i'm saying um but we not we not knowing that the rest of the world still works like this you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah you're right and and depending on your audience and 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 the setting and and uh and a host of other personal and historical factors you, you're going to you're going to you're going to take inventory of of your your personal situation and probably act accordingly or at least do what you think is best at, at that time or in that moment or however you handle it but yeah, hey. you, don't, you don't do it. You go, to France, you go to France, Rome, or you know what I'm saying, where they still yeah. kings and queens over there, where you have no choice but to um, do that. It's, it's basically like the government. You know what I'm saying? They tell you what you can do and what you're allowed to do in their home, in their country, in their space. You know what I'm saying? So that's royalty. Rather you believe it or not, we bow down to people every day. You know, <laughs> so uh, without no, without unconsciously. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of like. Uh, but 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 this is the reason why I say I this is the reason why I put in a in a chat um we modify it. that's the, the only the only difference between the two of y'all what y'all was saying before is that we modify hey we modify things to fit our day to day life. Hey yes, yes. We we modify things to fit our everyday life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's like we y'all both was talking about the same thing, but she was just talking about the modified version. Like you know, what I'm saying like it, like modifying things to work, like not just 
throwing it away, but making it work. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like a used car. We like used cars, me and you. We like used cars. I'm going to throw myself in a bus, too. We right. like used cars, you know what I'm saying? Because we can make it work. We're just not going to take it to the junkyard. Oh, it's got too many miles on it. You know what I'm saying? No, we know how to make it work. Modify it to make it work. That, that's that's the only difference between the two points that I was getting. It's just she had the modified version that the, that the United States modified and make work for their, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Outlook. Well, yeah, and I agree, you know, because she basically talking that Gucci, Louis, Dolce, Gabbana, you know, uh, uh, the stuff. And I'm talking, and you know, that Kmart, Walmart, Walgreens, um, you know what I'm yeah, saying? You know, the, shit, the shit that don't, that's not expensive, but, but from the stores that, you know what I mean, got all the money, though. They got our money though, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm I'm gonna say this, and you know, I, I but I'm only saying this because of the, of the true logic in it, but it, I, I I don't mean to offend anybody, and I'm not even really being offensive, but you know, you can't trust nothing a woman say when she get emotional, you know what I'm saying? Like this shit is crazy, it's off the hook. So I'm gonna yeah. have to, I, I'm just gonna have to uh I'm just gonna have to nullify um everything that she said tonight. But it's all good though. It don't mean that it's not good stuff. It's just, you know. You're not speaking from a I'm just saying, you're not speaking I appreciate from it. normal space. You know. So I said, I'm only playing with y'all. It's all good. L- listen, I appreciate y'all calling in. Good stuff from both of y'all. Very, 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 uh, very helpful, very helpful stuff. You know what I'm saying? So um both of y'all should go and do something that somebody told y'all not to do for y'all girls or for y'all men, you know, right now. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what y'all should do. That's the assignment. Whatever. Let me show a call to you next time I'm, I'm emotional. Thanks. All right, y'all. <laughs> Back in y'all All right. Let's do these birthday shout-outs, y'all. We got to get them about it. No, before we do the birthday shout-outs, though, I want y'all to know, all right, we had a nice little run this week. Remember, I, on Sunday, I told y'all I, I wouldn't be here on Monday. And then I said, well, no way I'm going to be here on Tuesday. And Tuesday, I was like, look, y'all can forget about tomorrow. No way I'm on tomorrow. Well, I'm going to tell y'all straight up and down. I got the word today. Ain't no way we're going to have a show at this time tomorrow. So don't look for it, whatever. More than likely, I'll do a show when I get home tomorrow night, and that's going to be late. So I'll still do it though. You know, y'all can catch the rebroadcast, or y'all can like get up and you know get up and, and watch the show. But nonetheless, um, I really enjoyed these past three shows this week because I didn't know that we were going to have them, and I enjoyed the participation. Y'all know how it go, man. Peace to all my day ones, my every days, and my brand news. I love y'all to death, resuscitate y'all, love y'all right back to life. Let's do these birthday shout outs. We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious November 17th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one out the box, Charlotte Fay. Turning 40 years old today. Welcome to the 4040 Club. Got the 40 in your hand. Got the bow, bow. Yeah. Got you for 10 years now. And also, Tanya Allen, happy birthday to you. And Mary Bryant, turning 56 years old today. And Jada Andrews, happy birthday to you. And Solicia Abreu. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is Solicia. Okay. Turning 34 years old today. And Rolanda Tulin turning 28 years old today. And Sarah Harbin, turning 46 years old today. And Kasim, Kasim Ibn Bell, happy birthday to you. And also Janice Wiggins, turning 65 years old today. And uh, go-getter Tamara Arthuris Hawkins, happy birthday to you. And Derek McKinney, happy birthday to you. And Femi 
Nene Blanco turning 34 years old today. And go get a Stacy Covert Washington turning 49 years old today. And last but not, 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 not. Last but not, not, not. One of the smartest girls in seventh and eighth grade, my girl Tanya Newman. Yeah, turning 51 years old today. I've known her since the 1982. Tanya was tall. She was like the woman of the class. When we was all 12 and 13 looking, she was all more like older looking. Because she was tall. You know what I'm saying? And she was mature. She, she didn't, you know, she... Now we all look, you know, we basically all caught up in size and, and maturity and all that kind of stuff. But that's my girl, Tanya Newman. Happy birthday to you. I want to say happy birthday to all of you and anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious, glorious, glorious... November 17th, anywhere out there in the world, worldwide, internationally, and universally. All of y'all go ahead and turn up, turn up, but don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. A rock out, rock on it, do the damn, the damn, the rock out, rock on it, do the, do the damn, rock out, rock on it, do the damn thing, you do your thing. Y'all represent the queens and kings, you do your thing. Y'all represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind, and any, any, to any, to uh, anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours, and remember, man, you can hold out if you want to, but you're only going to hold out if it suits you. So your man or your woman, if you think that your man or your woman deserves what you want to give them, and even sometimes if they don't, you're going to go all out for them and support them, buy them what they want. And if you won't, that probably means that there's some trust issues. You don't believe that y'all should be together. But if you believe that y'all have a bond and y'all going to be together for a while, then why sever the ties and let other girls and guys tell you how to run your truths and lies? Your truth is something that you own yourself, and you're going to make sure that you protect your health. Sometimes you might not even do that, but you're going to get your shit. You believe that, and everything is going to be your right, and everything is going to be your right. Thank it won't. Uh. I'm going to thank y'all for coming through, man. Um, Like I said, we won't be on this time tomorrow. Late night, hopefully you know, we can get something popping right around Right around midnight, some shit like that. Yeah, I said, we gonna see. I, we, we, look, we gonna do it. We gonna do something. I bet you. I, I, I bet you we gonna do something. Okay, okay, all right, all right, okay, okay, all right, all right. So y'all have a great night. Real great. You understand know what I'm saying? And y'all do the damn thing. Really do the damn thing. All right. So, so for my Instagrammers, yeah, five slam a jammer. Thanks for coming on through and let me exercise my grandma. I say hi, 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 peace. Uh, yeah, like that. True. And and for my blog talkers, yeah, I get back when you walk. Uh, so let me just get it up. Uh, no, I ain't playing no music tonight. We gotta get over out of here. You know what I'm saying we gotta get out of here. Son. Come on, we, uh, damn browser. I'm using Chrome tomorrow, man. I'm using, I'm using Google Chrome tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, I sit down. Yeah, come on in the episode. All right. And for my YouTube, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. We'll see y'all on the next time, my boobies. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. And Rock Kim and say peace. Love y'all, man. Oh, still love y'all.